How's it going, everyone? I am Carmen Michael, the professional mic holder, and I am drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started that uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Dranimos be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff. They got t-shirts. They got hoodies. They got beans. They got lots of great stuff, encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone, live their best self, and Hey, it's something I try to live every day. Now, be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order, use the code Drinking at Mo's, get 10% off, and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody. Welcome to Drinking at Mo's. Big Mo here. You know the drill, YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. Because you know what? Just because I'm near 200 episodes now does not mean that that YouTube algorithm is any less of a pain in the ass. Um, most places you can find your audio podcast too. I mean, now thinking about it, I am on quite, quite a damn few of them. I am excited to have with me Carmen Michael. How you doing? Man, I am excited to be here, man. I heard drinking at Moe's. I feel unprepared. I've got, I mean, I've got my water bottle next to me, but I, I see I, you've got I, Diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I, I always tell people just because it says drinking at Moe's doesn't mean it has to be alcoholic. The nectar of the gods is what you have right there. Oh, I'll, drink, oh. I'll drink to that. My My wife likes to tell me I have a problem. Ah, I tell her... I told her I have it figured out. As long as I got some, I don't got a problem. There's nothing wrong with Diet Dr. Pepper. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Nope. I I had to switch from regular doctor's stuff, but it is what it is. That's a whole nother story for another right, right now, there's someone angrily commenting under this video saying, it's barbecue water. It's blah, blah, no. blah. No. Oh, I, I have heard no. that. I have heard that, and you know what I always tell them, jokingly? Delicious barbecue-flavored water. <laughs> it's it's too good, man. I don't I don't oh. know why I don't know why there's haters. Well, oh, I, I don't get it either. I do not. But the the first thing I'd like to start off with everybody with is what got you started as a fan, and then what got you making the leap into the business. So the first one is a rather easy answer. Um, I was told from my grandmother, uh, basically when she would watch me when I was still in diapers, that really the only thing that would get my attention and get me to just sit down and basically just <laughs> shut up <laughs> was when WCW was on and more importantly, when Sting was on. Ah, It was something about the bright face paint, the blonde flat top haircut that anytime he was on TV, apparently I would just stop what I was doing and I would just stare at the TV. And I mean, the, it just carried on. Uh, I had a little flat top for a while as a kid. I was seeing every single year for Halloween, <laughs> which is weird because fast forward, I ended up, uh, I was working as a stagehand for an AEW show I'm backstage and Sting actually came and stood next to me. And while he's standing there, I'm playing it cool. But in my head, I'm like, I was you every year for Halloween. <laughs> and then uh, as far as getting in the business, um, I have a background. Originally, I was a musician. I sang and played guitar in a touring band. Then I transitioned more into the technical side because uh not sure if anyone knows, but musicians don't make a lot of money. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I worked as a stagehand uh, for many bands, everything from Slipknot to the Rolling Stones to even WWE and AEW. Um, on top of that, I learned how to mix audio, uh, operate lights, you know, pretty much everything behind the scenes technically. Mm. And then uh, 
I had a couple friends out in Georgia. Uh, shout out Nathan Mowry, Gary Lamb, and uh, all that whole crew over there for Southern Honor, Dylan Frymeyer. Um, they had just launched a show, and their debut show was coming up. So I went out there thinking I'll go support them once, like, you know, say, hey, good job, friends, great job. But I ended up loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I expected to be like, oh, good show, guys. And then it was so good that I was like, I've never seen anything like this. So I kept coming back month after month mm -hmm. after month. And they had a show. Uh, I know it was unofficially called SHW 1000. Their goal was to get a thousand people in the building. So they announced in advance that Cody Rhodes was going to be there. Mm. And, you know, it's Cody. big star, big star studded show. And uh, I had worked with uh, Chris Jericho before mm. doing some uh, music video work for Fozzie. And something told me, I'm, I, no one, no one spoiled the secret for me, but something told me, I was like, I feel like Jericho's going to be there. So, uh, and then by proxy, this is right before AEW launched. So I'm like, I wonder if Kenny's showing up. So this is all, <laughs> prim all premonition stuff, stuff I was even joking around with friends about. Didn't know if it was going to happen or not. This is all important for the story because mm. I am in the crowd and I look over and as someone is making their entrance, the, uh, Essentially, the computer lost uh, contact with the projector. It swapped the uh, instead of uh, instead of being a second screen, it began to mirror the uh, the actual computer. So you could see the Ugh. list of videos. Ugh. And I'm not sure if anyone noticed it. I noticed it and I immediately got up from my seat and ran to the tech booth. And I said, get out of my way. Let me fix this. <laughs> and I remember people looking at me like, excuse me? And Gary Lamb was up there, said he knows his shit. Let him do it. <laughs> so immediately I'm like, turn off the projector. Here, let me switch this. Let me switch this. Get it fixed. You know, I noticed looking on it further on some videos for people who are going to make a surprise appearance. Okay. I don't know if anyone else saw that, but that is how I first sort of made my presence felt and then sure enough the next month as i'm driving to the venue for the show i get a text from gary lamb and he says hey carmen do you know how to run lights i said you know i really don't like to like i'm more of an audio guy but you know i'd be happy to learn and that's how i got my foot in the door started running lights for southern honor uh got to work with names like rock and roll express and mm. all these big names that were coming in and that was how I got my foot in the door. Dang, yeah. All it takes sometimes is just getting that that foot in the door. Just I know being assertive. <laughs> nope. That that true. I know <laughs> hell, even even with this podcast, I remember and I still love talking to I love my Dr. Pepper, but as I joke, it gives me the perks <laughs> like crazy. But I love talking with my friends here in the business locally to me. Mm -hmm. But I started getting this feeling I'm going to run out of people to new people to talk to here in almost 200 episodes now. <laughs> yeah. And so I remember I tweeted, I, I forget who it was, but somebody I knew from my time when I was in Southern California with the Navy and the SATs liked it. And I'm like, I remember it was right around the time that I was hearing about them going up against the Briscoes and the Hardys. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what if? So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> and I literally, I remember specifically messaging them and saying, I know this might be a long shot, but here. And then, boom, I had them on, and I've been off to the races. I've, good Lord, trying to, some of the names that I've been able to talk to. Like, I remember when I told people I had Carrie Silken on, they were like, what? That's a big and one. Then, and Ring, then, of Honor, uh, Ring of Honor has always been a goal of mine, and. 
you know, I know different ownership now, but fingers crossed that, you know, someday. someday. Oh yeah. And I've been, I've been lucky enough to have a few people that have been featured on there. Former ring of honor, six man tag champ Dutch. That was awesome. Um, who else? Um, some are escaping me. Billy Starks. Yes. That loves Billy. Me. It is awesome to see Billy. Cause I'm like, obviously in the Southern independent scene, like her name's been around for a while, which is crazy considering she's what? 18. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> and I've been able to call a few of her matches and watching her progress as fast as she has. And on the level that she has, like where she's getting respect from like some of the very best in like all of women's wrestling. It's awesome. Seeing her challenge for that ring of honor women's championship on pay-per-view right. just blew my mind. That I'm, is I'm so going to be amazing. I'm so damn happy for her. No, I, I actually I, got it. I actually got saying, to meet I hope... her at a revolver show. Yes. See her in a scramble match. Good Lord, just as nice as when I was talking to her on the podcast. I really hope that Billy knows that everyone down here in the Southeast is rooting for her, mm. for all of her success. Same goes to Brogan Finley, who uh, just signed with WWE. So ah, shout yes. out to Billy and Brogan. I know they're moving around right now, but <laughs> all the luck to them. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you mentioned – before I get into a few other things, you mentioned your deal with Sting. Yes. I feel like that is how I would be if I ever got to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. Man. <laughs> I swear to God, I and I joked about it, but I'm kind of serious. I don't think I'd be able to get a word out. <laughs> I don't. So, so I've, I've been able to meet Sting once before then and I managed to communicate with him a little bit, but like it was, <laughs> it it was like one of those, like as words are coming out of my mouth, I'm like, what, what is my life, dude? Like <laughs> I've had several of those moments. Like my two biggest heroes growing up were Sting and Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Ah, managed to meet both of them and managed to not pee myself speaking to either of them. So <laughs> I, I've been, I have been lucky enough myself to get to meet a few of my favorites, like some of my autographed figures and stuff up here. I got to meet uh, Rikishi. I got a signed head shrinker Fatu figure and I got to tell him the story that him as one of the head shrinkers was in my very first ever WWE show. <laughs> that, that was pretty cool. And, you know, outside of wrestling, it, growing up, it was always pro wrestling and Ninja Turtles for me. Yes. I and, used to have my Ninja Turtles fight my wrestling figures when I was so, a kid. <laughs> all the time. And I got two things right here for the people watch the video one of this yeah sorry audio this, listeners yeah that, that's <laughs> it looks cool i promise the youtube channel but the same show that i met rikishi at it was at a comic con and a couple tables down from him was the voice of michelangelo from the original cartoon and the guy behind splinter in Yo. the first two movies <laughs> So, yeah, I, oh, God, some of the stuff that I've been able to do with this podcast has just been crazy. So, like, you know, you like, have to meet Kevin Nash now, so you can the, check two off. You can get I, Super I, Shredder I, and I, Kevin. Yeah. Up there, I literally have a 30th anniversary <laughs> Super Shredder still in the damn box. <laughs> I love that you have this little collection, too, because... When I started collecting, it was one of those things where I'm like, why would I want toys? That's so stupid. And then it became like people started bringing me Sting action figures to the shows I was on because I knew I was this like huge Sting fan. So people yeah. just started bringing me Sting action figures. And I was like looking at them like, oh, man, like this brings me back to when I was a kid. And then I decided, okay, 
I'll start a little collection. Like I'll start a shelf that's just people that I've worked with, which was a great idea. Like when I was like fresh in the business, which I've been, um, uh, I've been doing ring announcing and commentary for three years now. Wow. Uh, you know, I did lights for a few months for Southern honor before the pandemic, but like, I haven't been in the business that long, but that, you know, looking at it the first few months, I'm like, ah, oh, cool. Like five, six figures. But now it's like, I've worked at impact doing a uh, ring crew and, uh, I provided some audio for their, uh, virtual meet and greet sort of deal. And then I'm thinking like, well, that's like 15 figures there. Like now I gotta start being, now I gotta start being particular with them. Like who have I interacted with? Like, just because I handed Matt Cardona a water bottle or something like, does yeah. that mean I have to get a, a Matt Cardona figure? Like, <laughs> so it's just it's one of those things where it quickly grew out of control, and I had to like pump the brakes. Like I say that, and I literally just bought a Samoa Joe figure that's sitting right over here that I bought the Target today. exclusive. Yes, because I have I, not one myself. I did a seminar with Samoa Joe a couple months ago in New York City, and it was it was rather great. And like, literally like the bag is sitting right over here, just off camera. <laughs> I haven't even opened it yet. I walked no. in and I walked in. I was like, okay, I got like 15, 20 minutes before this podcast. My, my whole thing. If the people are still alive, I try to keep them in the box just in mm -hmm. case I meet them. But I do have a part of my shelf where it's, you know, ones that have passed away. Like, I got yeah. Big Boss Man, Andre the Giant, I got an Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man, and I got a Bam Bam Bigelow Funko Pop down there. But signed ones, good Lord, I got I got Swerve, Keith Lee, Rikishi, Drew McIntyre, Kushida, Rich Swan, um, John Morrison, Taya Valkyrie, uh, Hangman Adam Page, Lance Archer, and Jeff Cobb. Man, that's quite the collection. And I, I never, and I don't buy like already autographed. Like I like mm -hmm. taking it to the person and getting to meet them that way. Yeah. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, someone who I somehow run into, I've run into him multiple times. I'm sure he can't choose me from a lineup from anybody else, but it was the weirdest experience. I was actually, uh, so in my stagehand work, uh, basically, you know, it's going in, setting up the stages, setting up the speakers, the lights, whatever. I want to say this one was for Alanis Morissette or Dua Lipa, maybe. And it was in uh, Nashville. And I remember as I'm leaving the venue, I'm like walking out towards the parking garage. It's maybe like, I don't know, 1 p.m., something like that. I'm about to go get some lunch. Drew McIntyre just randomly walks in. And I'm just like, mm. and then all my yeah. stagehand friends are like, who's that big guy? I'm like, that's Drew McIntyre. Like he's in WWE. Like he's kind of a big deal. And they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I work in wrestling. This is cool. Yeah. And then, First uh, time I ever got to meet him was actually at an independent show, which was at the convention center attached to the hotel I was put in the night before I left for boot camp. <laughs> it's another quick story with him. <laughs> so it's funny to me, like just the two or more than two lives that I tend to leave lead with all this, uh, all the stage hand work, all the wrestling stuff. <laughs> but like anytime wrestling comes to town, they know like, okay, we got to put Carmen on the show. And I remember they put me on uh, is WWE Live here in Huntsville. And they were like, hey, we're not really supposed to be backstage, but like, I know this is your thing. Like, you can be backstage, but you can't, like, you cannot go down this hallway with the locker rooms. Like, they've told us no one can go down there. I was like, of course, absolutely. Not even five minutes later, Drew <laughs> walks up to me. He's like, hey, can you point me towards the locker room? And I'm like, yeah, it's uh, down the hall. He's like, Oh, uh, can, can you take me to them? And I'm like, sir, I, I, I can't. <laughs> I would love to, but I was specifically just told not to. <laughs> he seemed like slightly irritated, but he like he got it. He's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's dumb, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, and you know what? It's funny because a lot of people don't think about the other jobs in pro wrestling, and you've done a little bit of everything. I have literally, like, <laughs> hell, even just at New South Pro Wrestling here in Alabama, I do all the graphics, all the videos, <laughs> ring announce, commentary. I help out behind the scenes. Like, it's one of those things where as people leave the company, it's always like, Carmen, you you know how to do that, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. And then it just like, after a while, you're s- sitting there and you're like, I just have like a mountain of responsibilities now that I wasn't expecting. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I, can, yeah. I can totally imagine that, you know, somebody leaves and then it's like, oh, well, I get, we got somebody here that knows how to do it. Yeah, and it's just. Oh, Carmen can ring announce. Oh, Carmen can do commentary. No, oh, Carmen can do <laughs> graphics. And it's just after a while, I'm like, dang, okay, I'm setting up the show. I'm doing all the <laughs> all the entrance videos. I'm doing every oh. flyer, every match graphic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and man, it is it has been kind of a bucket list item for me to even get featured like for a couple matches in a show, even mm-hmm. for r- ring announce or commentary. I've been a special guest ring announcer once, but that was like a while before the podcast. Yeah. And yeah, that was that whole weekend was a story in itself because the now Ruby Soho was there. And the first night they had a big after party after the show and there was karaoke, and I have to be hammered if I'm getting up there. And well, <laughs> what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh God, it's happened so few times. I don't know if I really even have one. I but I do. Rem- the last thing I remember that night was I was walking up just to see what the song was, and then somebody throws the mic in my face, and then I'm drunkenly singing. <laughs> puddle of mud she hates me yes <laughs> and now looking back on it i'm like oh god i made an ass of myself in front of ruby soho would you say that she hates you <laughs> I, I, I don't know <laughs> but but yeah hopefully someday i get a get another crack at it we'll Man, see i, I hated so I'm not sure if you've seen the announcement that I made recently, but I have decided to leave my full time job to more. I, I did see that to more pursue the wrestling, and this ties into the karaoke thing because um, I recently was asked to do commentary for Larry D's last match. So oh. I had a six hour drive from Kentucky back to Huntsville, Alabama, which is crazy because that whole trip, like. I ended up driving out to St. Louis for GCW the night before and ended up calling, what, eight out of the 11 matches? Oh, then, man. I, I missed I missed that weekend, and I have always wanted to go to a GCW show. Because, you have to. It's amazing. Oh, in particular, I want to have one where Nick Gage is on the card because I tell, I've said it a bunch of times. It seems like every damn show that I see him at, those first few notes of his music hits, and that mm-hmm. venue turns into experience. a damn mosh pit. So being in the ring as he's coming out is just the wildest feeling. Oh, I can but, imagine. <laughs> but to my point a second ago, is so I drove six hours from Huntsville to St. Louis, six hours from St. Louis to Cynthiana, Kentucky, and then had a six-hour drive overnight from Cynthia, Kentucky to Huntsville for my job that started at 7 a.m. <laughs> oh, so Larry's like, hey, man, you coming to the after party at the bar? And I was like, dude, I really, really wish that I could. <laughs> but, like, if I don't get on the road now, there's a chance that I may be late for work. So <laughs> ended up going in on no sleep. And that's kind of been the story for this last year because – uh. Prior to this year, I've done maybe 30, 35 shows a year. And then this year, I uh, decided, you know what? 
this is bringing me a lot of joy. This is what I love doing. I'm going to go at, at the time I thought was all in, <laughs> but Ooh. with the full-time job, not as much, but like I'm closing in on a hundred shows this year. Damn. Uh, all right. I've done, I keep a, uh, a running count of everything. Uh, this past weekend was 94 Ooh. when I made my debut for Larry Auto Pro. So, Oh yeah, I was, I uh, will go into <laughs> some of that here in a little bit. But there That's was one, a... 100 this year, but next year my goal is 150. If I can hit uh, 150, gotta, I'll be happy. Gotta ramp it up when you get that, when you get the first goal. Now, one one promotion that kind of caught my attention when I saw you were involved in them, because when I first had IWTV, this place was catching my attention, TWE Chattanooga. Well, on the hair, right <laughs> and I don't, I don't remember if it was specifically that promotion, but it was filmed at their mm-hmm. venue where there was their logo. I believe it might have been one of the ICW No Holds Barred yes. fight pit shows, mm-hmm. and then I started seeing more of the TWE shows. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging the feel there. This has been a great year for TWE as far as expansion. I know they just had their 10-year anniversary, but I feel like I've seen more TWE this year than I've seen, you know, the last nine. I love it. Nope. That, yeah, I was I was about what what has it been like for you being involved there? Because I know from a fan perspective, I'm you know seeing well professional wrestling in general right now uniqueness is kind of few and far between Mm -hmm. so when you have a promotion like TWE that I feel the presentation and some of the feel of the venue from watching it I feel like it's kind of unique so it caught my eye so uh I had done shows there previously through New South uh at that venue and obviously Jaden Newman used to be rather frequent at new south pro wrestling he you know is the owner of twe um and then this year when i was just trying to get extra reps in because at the beginning of the year i had no idea i was going to do almost 100 shows like literally i was like you know if i could hit 40 that's that's if i could hit 40 and then when i saw that was like quickly coming i was like 75 is my number like final number 75 is the goal but uh, TWE had announced that they were going to start doing Monday night student shows. Mm. It's basically just a chance to get extra reps for the students to come in, you know, wrestle around. And I reached out and I said, hey, is there any chance I could come in? Like, is there anything I can do to help out? And it started out as just, you know, well, they need they need some extra time doing promos. So could you, you know, be our mean gene? Could you, you know, come over here to the backdrop. Could you record some interviews with them, some promos with them, give them some feedback. So started doing that. And, you know, it's every other week. So it started to start, started to add up was there quite a lot more than normal than it was. Hey, do you want to ring it out tonight? Hey, do you want to do this? Hey, are you free Saturday to come in for our, for our, you know, main shows. So started doing that. Uh, been fortunate enough to do commentary for several of the last few shows. As long as it doesn't interfere with a new South date, I will always do everything in my in my realm to uh, be there for TWE. So it's been fun. I recently did a live stream with TWE, which is the first IWTV live stream I had done in about a year and a half. So Ooh. felt good. I, I've, I've, done, been, I've done live streams elsewhere. Just it, haven't been on IWTV in a while. It feels good. Yeah, I've been I've been catching a few of the IWTV live streams. I've been lucky enough to get to in the show talk with a bunch of people from Matt Tremont's promotion H two O, and they they've been telling me about all these crazy matches. So I'm like. Damn it! I gotta get IWTV back, and then, <laughs> boom! They it 
actually happened right as they were starting up this new season of uncharted territory mm-hmm. and i pretty much every week with the exception of one time that i caught it like a day or two later but yeah pretty much every week and yeah i definitely been good i remember heading up there over the summer for marcus mathers uh all i want to show with Braden toon and speaking of which shout out Braden toon he has been busting his tail, traveling all around the country. Definitely. He wants, he wants it just like I do, man. I love seeing him nonstop traveling. He's been traveling to New Jersey every single week from Alabama. Ooh, to be on that's those, quite the drive. To be on those Uncharted shows. But uh, we went up there to the venue over the summer, and <laughs> unfortunately the air conditioning wasn't working. And I swear to God, I lost like six or seven pounds just from that <laughs> night, like, I was drenched. It was insane. And then like the very next day, with complete juxtaposition, because you had the H2O building, which is what it is. And then the very next night, I'm working for GCW at this like pristine, like state of the art ballroom with a giant video wall and a full blown light show. And I'm like, this weekend could not have been any more different. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. No. One thing that can, it popped up on one of the pictures that you know showed some of the stuff that you've done that I don't I, it surprised me but pleasantly that you were extra on the show Heels on Star yes. which man that was the reason I got stars and Same. I was like <laughs> that was like a damn favorite show of mine that definitely disappointed me with the news of them not taking it back up because I Tell me remember about <laughs> literally the day that that news came out I'm like well I guess I'm canceling stars now so my understanding and I don't know if this is factual I haven't heard it from anyone on the show just heard it through word of mouth is that they are trying to find a new location for the show because they don't want it to end but You know, fingers crossed. Definitely. (laughs) But, you know, I've had these, I've had these different occurrences through this last two years, year and a half, maybe with, with work where, you know, I've had all these wrestling opportunities come up and it's really interfered with, you know, the full-time job, which is another reason why, you know, I'm moving on from that live, but. I remember I remember seeing an advertisement saying that Heels was looking for uh, they were looking for extras to be in the crowd to be as a fan on this particular date. And I said, you know, what the heck? Like I'll I'm gonna shoot my shot, like I'm gonna send it in, like that'd be a cool experience to come in for. Oh, yeah. So I ended up sending in my headshot, which of course is my wrestling one. It's me in the suit holding the microphone and all the information they wanted me to fill out. And I would say not even five minutes later, they give me a call and they say, Hey, I'm sitting here right now with our casting director. And he saw your picture and was like, we've got to have this guy. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's awesome. Cool. 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 Uh, basically assuming that it meant like as a fan, he's like, no, like he wants you to be a wrestler. Like, do you have any wrestling gear? And I said, uh, no, like I, I've never wrestled. Like I, I don't have anything. Uh, they said, well, don't worry. Just come in. We'll get you some gear. Do you know any wrestlers who would like to be on the show? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I reached out to everyone and I ended up, uh, getting, getting Braden Toon, Dylan McQueen and a handful of others on the show. And, you know, through, bad luck or whatever it was i remember they gave me the date and they're like okay it's monday blah 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 that you'll come in for your you know screen test your outfit or to choose your outfit or whatever and that was the very same day that my new job had wanted me to start (laughs) oh no so i had to call my job that i just got hired on for and that Hey, um, 
So you know how I said I was going to start Monday? Is it possible I could maybe start Tuesday instead? <laughs> and that really, uh, you know, sort of set the tone. But <laughs> they somehow allowed it. I went to Atlanta, got fitted, like made me try on like this '90s workout attire and wrestling gear and all this stuff. Uh, took photos, took some videos and everything, and then they said, "Okay, well." Be back in two days. And like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize this was going to be like a multiple time a week thing. And they're like, oh yeah. So basically, right out, right out of the gate, I had to tell my job like, I love you all, but like this is my favorite show, and I somehow got cast on it by like some freak, <laughs> freak of nature, like whatever it is. Like, I like I, I have to do this. Like this is a cool opportunity. And they're like, is this something you see yourself doing like a lot? I was like, no, like this is literally like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So ended up doing that, driving four hours to Atlanta, filming 12 hours, driving four hours back, going into my day job. And that's every other day. And of course, thanks to uh, the magic of Hollywood out of the, God knows how many days I was there. Boils down to maybe two seconds of screen time. (laughs) But you know what? I was there, and it (laughs) putting that right on my resume. I was there. You cannot take it away from me. CM Punk said hello to me. You can't take it away. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It counts. I I remember the very first day of filming, and I'm not going to get into – who I think CM Punk is as a person, because I've heard a million stories, but very first day of filming, it's myself, Braden Toon, and then uh, one of our trainees at the time for New South, who ended up coming with us. (laughs) We were the first people there, because obviously we drove from Alabama, and we're nervous. We don't want to be late. We get there, we're waiting for our COVID tests, have our masks on. Very first person to come say hello to us. CM Punk <laughs> walks up with his coffee and he's just like, good morning, guys. We're going to have a great day. Like just very casual. I just give him the, Hey man, what's up? And then pass by. And then my friends are just like, what the hell? <laughs> CM Punk. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I was like, I wasn't going to, I wasn't not going to say, Hey, like, don't be rude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I get you there. No. Now- Another cool thing that happened recently that I little little jealous of the whole show for I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Lariato. Lariato. There we go. And getting to announce a War Games match. That was the wildest day. I'll tell you. And this is why I preach all the time to everyone who will listen, get in the car, like get in the car, go to these promotions. Even if you're not booked, go shake hands with the promoter, say hello. Um, Originally, I had no booking on Saturday. I had a booking on Friday night. And then I was talking to my commentary partner for New South, uh, Rob Weathers, one of the best independent commentators out there. I don't feel like he gets enough love, so shout out to Rob. But uh, I had recently missed a New South show for the first time in three years, and we decided we were going to record the commentary for it and post. Uh, Schedules were a little off, so he was like, why don't you just come to Atlanta, record commentary for New South with me, and then I've I've got a show with Larry Otto that night. You can just ride with me and say hello. I was like, okay, well. I'm going to bring my suit just in case. Like, you never know. Yeah. Ended up getting down there. Sure enough, ring announcer Brett Wolverton was unable to make it. Uh, recently had a loss in his family. Mm. So before I go any further, you know, heart goes out to Brett. Love you, dude. De- definitely. But it, it left an opportunity open, and uh, the promoter wanted Rob to do it. And Rob straight up was like, you've got one of the best ring announcers in the country, like right here. Let him do it. And then he just looked over at me and said, Do you have your do you have a suit? And I said, Yep. And he said, All right, let's go with it. So had no booking on Saturday, ended up 
getting booked for Larry Auto, which was a company that has always been on my bucket list. So ended up getting to do that. Uh, Jimmy Wang Yang was there. Uh, Ron Simmons, PCO, a bunch of names that I look up to. And the main event, keep in mind, this is their fifth anniversary show. This is like their biggest show of the year. And then here I am making <laughs> my debut. <laughs> but the uh, main event was a War Games match, which was my first time doing that. So right before I got in the cage, I'm just like reading over the rules again and again and again to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't want to. I don't want to get in there and you know say the rules wrong and then. Mm. mess everything up <laughs> uh, yeah yeah throw it off a little bit there <laughs> yeah it's, it's the, been um, awesome. i i can imagine i mean i only recently saw my first ever cage match so i'm like there, so war games that like damn they're not a physical list or anything like that that i've had but like a little mental checklist of things that i thought would be cool to do in my career a lot of them are different championships that I've wanted to either ring announce for or compensate for, which I've checked a lot of those off. That you have. And, I mean, quick tangent, but the Ring of Honor World Championship I got to commentate for, which was the wildest experience. Uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver, Larry Otto, GCW World Championship, NWA Women's Championship, Junior Heavyweight Championship, like all these titles, I'm just like, I know this doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And I'm sure like everyone would be like, Oh, you, you the Mark, but like, we're all fans. Like we all no, got into it, it for the same reason. And like having these championships that I've, you know, either watched since I was a kid or like, you know, just been a fan of in general. And then getting to have my voice be the soundtrack for that match for something that's going to go in the history of books. It just, yeah, it's really cool. Oh, but, Definitely. But War Games was definitely on there, and very thankful for that. You know, there's still a lot more on my bucket list. I keep adding to it, so. I recently got to record. I still need to put the episode together, but I've recorded with a man that has participated in the War Games match. Oh. Former NXT Tag Team Champion Danny Birch. Hey! <laughs> oh, Martin Stone. Yes! Yeah. So we had Martin in for New South Pro Wrestling's Haas this year. And you know what? I'm going to break some news right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to break some news. Screw it. I mean, I'm not going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm January 6th Martin Stone will be making his return to New South Pro Wrestling for our first annual Free Bird Cup. It's going to be a one-night trios tag team tournament in Florence, Alabama. Uh, obviously, more details will be announced soon. I mean, we're only in December, but January 6th, Martin Stone will be making his return. All right. I, he's He was a pleasure to work with. He said some really nice things towards me that I've, you know, I've kept to my heart and it's been, it was very encouraging. And I don't want to say he's, you know, the entire reason that I like gave that extra push through the rest of the year. But when I have all these people that I look up to come to me and say like, Hey, you're really good. Like eventually, like I start to believe it. I'm like, you know, maybe I should stop all the, you know, imposter syndrome BS and be like, you know what? Yeah. Maybe I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No, I I kind of had a similar thing with the, the podcast. I'll admit I'm my own worst critic. I've yet Same. to watch any episode back because I'm like, I just pick myself apart. But when I'm recording with somebody and I'm getting a name like Martin Stone, like uh, I just recorded, it's already been released, but with Bull Buchanan. Nice. Um, we're Dutch going back there. It took me almost a year to get John Wayne Murdoch, but I got it, and that was fun. But to hear some of these people, like you said, people you look up to and they're complimenting you know, when you're done, it's like, okay, I must be doing something right. Okay, let's go. The biggest one for me, and I've 
I really hope it's okay to tell it. I hope he doesn't get mad at me for this. But I remember I was taking a seminar, a virtual seminar with Kevin Kelly, who in my opinion is one of the best commentators of all time. I know he gets some hate. I feel like he's one of the best. And during the seminar, I asked my question. He answers it. And then afterwards he says, hey, by the way, your name comes up a lot to me. And I just kind of like pauses it. Uh, is, is is that a is that a good thing, a bad thing? <laughs> and he laughed. He's like, no, it's a good thing. I, you know, I've been hearing a lot of good things about you. I've seen some of your work and I'm a fan and I expect some great things in your future. And just hearing him say that, that was like the like light switch moment where it's like, OK, I've had multiple multiple people tell me this now. And when I have Kevin but, Kelly tell me this, I'm like, yeah. you know what? OK. Oh, yeah. Let's no. dive in. Oh, totally. Now, I have two categories here. One's a bit of a name game where I name off some people. I try to theme it towards the guests as much as possible. And this time it came easy because you had in a post that showed some of your accomplishments a list of matches that you've been involved with with Common Perry or Ring Announcing. So, I took each of these names from that list. Oh, no. So I give you the person, you give me some quick thoughts on them. All right. First one, one I'm curious about because I would love to meet the guy myself. Dan Housen. Creative. One of the nicest guys I've ever worked with. Worked with him several times now. And I'm gonna make this quick because I'm no I know this is supposed to be a speed speed yeah. thing, but I will I've got nothing but nice things to say with Dan Housen. I'm always his driver when he comes to New South. We've had breakfast together, shopped for toys together. Great dude. Love him. Oh yeah. Deserves Gotta all look. the success in the world. Oh, most definitely. I'm glad to see him back from the the injury getting back out there. All right. Next up, a guy I've had the pleasure of meeting multiple times. And he was actually in that match with Danhausen. I'm talking about Mike Bennett. Sweetheart. Oh, totally. He is someone who always encourages me. Someone, I mean, encourages everyone. Most positive person I've ever met. Oh, totally. I remember first show that I met him at was here in Omaha, Nebraska, where I live. And he was walking around the ring after the match. He, somebody handed him a Girl Scout cookie, and I literally <laughs> got a. Well, I got a photo here somewhere that I'm actually getting framed of him literally holding the Girl Scout cookie like he's about to bite into it. And the next time I met him was at Warrior Wrestling out of yes. Chicago. They did I, a. I want to get up there so bad. They, I've been out there. They made a St. Louis stop that I got invited out to that I got to be a part of the fan fest and got to, oh God, I did a mini episode with Bronson Reed. I talked to Jeff Cobb. Uh, good Lord. Mike Bennett was there. And I took that photo because I made an eight by 10 of it <laughs> and got him to sign. He was like, oh man, I remember that. So we were talking about imposter syndrome earlier, and I want you to know that match between Danhausen and Mike Bennett, literally three and a half months into me doing commentary. Wow. I had, I had just started, and I remember going into that being nervous as hell because I heard them in the locker room saying, you know, everyone expects a comedy match. Screw that. We're going to put on it technical classic we are going to show people that dan housen can wrestle and like i'm thinking that's a lot of pressure on me <laughs> like I, i'm i'm practically brand new to this like i hope i don't embarrass myself and you know we talk about being your own worst critic like i watch it back now and i think like it's it's fine but of course there's like things I'm like, oh, i wish i would have said this instead or yeah. i wish i would have you know worded it this way and like even my commentary partner now went back and watched that Rob Weathers and he said you were you were still pretty new to commentary weren't you I said yeah 
Like, how do you know? He said, it's like, everything you said was good. It's just like, I didn't, I didn't feel like you had that confidence yet. Like you just mm-hmm. kind of like sheepishly said it rather than he's like, now you get out there and you, you project your voice and you get really into it. It's like, he's like, then you were just kind of like, Oh man, yeah. this is cool. I'm glad to yeah. be here. <laughs> it, kind of like how I feel with the hype video for my channels that I got to do with the grizzled young veterans. Yes. I want to work with them so bad. Oh, such they're, amazing they're on dudes. that they're on that checklist man they're oh, on that such checklist. amazing dudes but with those those pictures like i had with mike bennett i've had this idea you know get it behind me here eventually but with people that i've met through through the podcast or whatever if i get a picture with you the one time i meet you mm-hmm. the next time i know i meet you i get an eight by ten of it and i get you to sign it I like that a lot. <laughs> I've I've gotten quite a few good ones this last weekend. Uh, one of my personal favorite ones that I have signed right now was uh, two thirds of the second gear crew, Manders and Mance Warner. Good dudes. So, so totally. All right, moving on to the next person, former Ring of Honor champion. Currently on Impact, Jonathan Gresham, the octopus. He is someone who silently supports me. He is someone who is happy to give me opportunities. And uh, he's at that level where it's it's always like I almost have to pinch myself at times. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your work and the fact that you know you think of me when you need a ring announcer or anything like that. Like, it's just, it's a good feeling. Nothing oh, but love for Gresham. He's given me a lot of opportunities. That, that That is awesome. Always good to have people like that. Now, I've, I've got to see him live before this next guy. Coincidentally, another person at Revolver. And he was in a, a Monsters Ball match that night. Ooh. I'm talking about PCO. And... I have, I had ran into him previously at a hotel, I believe. Uh, New South had actually done a show in New Jersey, which oddly enough, Tom is, you know, flat circle and all that stuff. We're actually going back to New Jersey in in February, February 24th. But uh, we had a show in New Jersey where he stayed at our hotel and had a brief interaction with him in the lobby. Didn't think anything of it. But then fast forward this past weekend, got to work with him at Larry Auto and mm. didn't have a lot of communication with him. Very formal, very respectful, very nice guy. Got my picture taken with him. He mm. was just not a bad experience whatsoever. Totally. You know what? Having the random interaction there that one time, I didn't actually get a talk with this person, but I was actually at Disney World with my my wife and some of my side of my family and we're on our way out. I dropped something. I went to pick it up. And then as I'm looking up, I see that very distinct tattoo on his left shoulder of the (laughs) T-Rex. I, I almost ran into Kevin Owens. I don't, I don't feel like he would even, I can't see him interacting in a negative way. He'd just probably say, Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Watch out there, bud. Like <laughs> and yeah, I I so badly wanted to say something, but I saw that he was with his family. So I'm like, a quick, you know what? I know who you are. I you know what? I wish I, I would have done that. I actually had a moment like that with Mick Foley, who randomly was at my work uh here at the Orion Amphitheater in Huntsville. He came to watch one of the bands and he came off the elevator and walked by me, saw all the stage hands, and he's like, "Hey, great job tonight, guys. See you." And I was like, oh, "I'm sure I just said something like, ah, good to see you, Mick. Have a good night." And his eyes just sort of lit up. He's like, "Ooh, wrestling fan." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I wish I would have said something, but you know what? He was with his family, and I didn't want to cause a commotion. I knew I saw him. I ended up running up to my wife, 
Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! You won't believe who I just saw. <laughs> Did you say Total anything, Joe? Well, no, of course not. Total fanboy moment for me, but yeah. <laughs> All right, now I have some random questions. Some might on. be some might be wrestling related. Some might not be. Some might have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. That's why it's random. All right. First one's one that I like to keep in as much as possible because it leads to some entertaining stories. Craziest in-match moment you've been able to witness. Oh, Lord. Oh, man, there's so many. Uh, Just recently, we had the heartbreak killers of Brogan Finley, Rico Gonzalez, and Hunter Drake pull the eye out of Dylan McQueen's skull. So I gotta Ooh. say that's that's a uh, pretty wild. Um, I have seen Hunter Drake again. <laughs> Hunter Drake and Colby Carino go through a flaming door. I've seen pretty much every weapon imaginable. I've hell, I called a death match main event in GCW. Like I've <laughs> I've seen a lot of crazy things. Though, so, yeah, you know what? Speaking of flaming stuff, my first ever legit. Death match, not something that hardcore match that just got death match slapped on it was actually coincidentally again at Revolver. It involved <laughs> I've Jake got to get Chris. out there, man. I've got to. Jake Chris versus Joel Bateman, and it was already wild because it was right after that Monsters Ball match with PCO. Yes. They were cleaning up. Jake rolls in, it's like. Fuck that, leave it, let's go. <laughs> stuff, that already, like Jake. stuff already all over the place. Jake, shout out to him. Had him on the podcast. Coincidentally, shortly after that whole burning the IWA Mid-South belt. But oh, Lord. <laughs> one of the nicest dudes ever. But the match ended with a spot. Four folding chairs. They bridged two panes of glass on there. And then... Bobby no. rolls in. <laughs> no. And I'm like, he pulls out a thing of lighter fluid. They light the glass on fire. Lord have mercy. Yeah. One of the most insane things I've ever witnessed. So just real quick, you mentioned Pro Wrestling Revolver and you mentioned Jake Christ. I've got to say, if you haven't seen the match he had with Jackie Thad yet, and I'm not sure that's a name that a lot of people are familiar with that's because the dudes had like maybe 10 matches. He is one of Larry D students. And I am telling you, this kid is a prodigy plaid. Jackie Thad challenged Jake Christ for the revolver championship at the uh, generation next last stand. And that's on premiere. Honestly, there were points where I looked over at my commentary partner, Nick Manawa, and like our eyes were wide. Cause we we're like, this kid is having, a bomb match with Jake Chris, like absolutely killer match. I think everyone needs to go out of their way to watch it, man. Oh, I will will definitely be going to try to check that one out. Now I mentioned before we started recording, my wife and I help out with a dog rescue. We have one that permanently lives with us, but we also have cats too. I got one that, for some reason, loves the hell out of me. I don't know why. (laughs) But everybody kind of leans one way or the other. I kind of, I'm whatever with both. Are you a dog or a cat person? Dog person. 100%. I lean more towards dog. Dogs are loyal and cats will just kind of sit in the corner and glare at you like, how dare you be in the room with me? (laughs) Yeah. The, The two that my wife had when we first got together yeah one in particular does that but yeah well well, dang right right by your side yeah the the foster here he's here taking a nap we got a english bulldog upstairs that i leave the door open because he comes down every once in a while but yeah i've always been more of a dog person but i i don't mind cats they're all right yeah. Ernest Our, Miller. Ernest Miller, great, you know. No, yeah. And a great cat, you know. Oh, totally. <laughs> All right. Now, 
I have also been somewhat of a movie buff. What would you say favorite movie? The Crow. Okay. That's a classic. The Crow, the Crow is probably my absolute favorite. Another movie I mentioned, I've actually, I think I've mentioned, I can't remember, it may have been the Fightful podcast. I don't hear enough love for it. Butterfly Effect is a movie okay. that, that I really enjoyed. And I, I, mean, I haven't seen it in 10 years. It may suck now. I don't know. But I really enjoyed that movie. I, you know what? I don't think I've seen it too many times. But you bring up The Crow. Some people wouldn't expect this from me. But his father, one of my favorite movies is a movie of his, Enter the Dragon. I oh. love that damn movie. Um, other than that, Force Gump, and then Alabama. Jenna, <laughs> we go together like peas and carrots. Or um, what's the other one? It's from it's a Mel Gibson Vietnam movie. I want to say Thin Red Line or We Were Soldiers. One of the two. But there's a scene where they're they're in training. They got people walking by, and somebody walks by Sam Elliott's character, and he goes, the one guy walking by and goes, uh, "Good good day or good morning or I think it was good day, sir." And Sam Elliott goes, "How do you know what kind of goddamn day it is?" <laughs> I love that damn movie and that part brings particular feelings for me because when I was in boot camp, I legit, one of my drill instructors said something very similar to that to somebody who was walking by said, good, good morning, petty officer. And he's like, is it? See, I would have just automatically assumed it was a Drake and Josh reference. So it must be like a generational thing. <laughs> Yeah, it would have have a like, good day. Took, Don't tell me what to do. It, it would have take it took everything in me not to just bust out laughing. I believe it. All right. Now I would, I would not do well in the military. I, I laugh too much. I, I don't know when to be serious. <laughs> yeah, you 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 learn pretty damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now with the name of a show like Drinking at Moe's, I feel I would feel weird. If I didn't have this in here, favorite drink, whether it be alcoholic or non or one of each. Well, I am actually completely sober. Don't drink okay. alcohol, I, but I, I respect that. If I don't have a water and I don't have an energy drink, it is almost always a diet Dr. Pepper. Or if it is an energy drink, uh, Really got I really gotten into the uh, Mountain Dew energies lately. They okay, give me, they give me just enough of that boost without getting me wired, and then I have to drink multiple a day to keep me going. Because uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen the amount of shows I've done this year, but I've been kind of busy. <laughs> yeah, I I do enjoy the Mountain Dew amps. I love I when they one. had. I love when they had more flavors, but they I guess only kept lime around i do love it though but yeah i like i think i've told you i i try to tell people just because it says drinking at mo's does not mean it has to be alcoholic because i know there's people out there that are sober that have battled addiction and or they just consider themselves straight edge so they just don't so i'm like i try to be respectful of that because i got all the respect in the world for anybody that has battled addiction and has become sober or just chooses to be that way because you know what? More power to you. As someone who almost always gets the question, why don't you drink? Oh, come on, come on. Why don't you drink? I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I know people don't. I mean, I don't to the level that I had like back in the Navy. Good Lord, I got some stories. It's because Diet Dr. Pepper is too good. Exactly how we started off. 
Dog. The Thunderers or the dog? <laughs> it was one of one of the dogs. The dog uh, chasing one of the cats. <laughs> yeah, that he he gets protective of food or water. Like if somebody gets too close, he gets a little nuts. You see, the cat started it. Yeah, what the, I'm saying. the damn cat That's started what I'm saying. it. <laughs> but yeah, oh god. Now I lost my train of thought. Oh well, we'll move on to the next thing. Story of my life. <laughs> sometimes I'm on, with... sometimes I am on commentary and I will like craft this very intricate, detailed story in my head, and I go to start saying it, and then I realize like halfway through it, like I forgot what my point is. And you, you just can... have to wing it. At that point, you're already talking. So you just have to keep going and be like, uh, here's oh, an ending point. <laughs> yeah, that 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 literally happened to me yesterday. Recording with somebody, I was getting through the, the little my little opening spot, and then I'm like, I, I, "I'm gonna start over." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, now best advice you have for anybody wanting to get into wrestling, like the m- multiple jobs that there are out there, just do it. Honestly, just do it. I hear time and time again, and I get everyone is at different points in their life, and I can't knock that, but I think the biggest thing is you have to be honest with yourself. If you say you want to do it, do it. I hear a lot of, man, I would love to start training, but, man, I would love to go further in my career, but, Man, I'd love to spend more time in the gym, but and it's about priority. Like it's if you want to do it, you'll do it. I've had way too many nights where I've gone into work on zero sleep because I had a full weekend of wrestling gigs and you know, hopped in the car, traveled 6 hours away, came back. It's just it's not for everyone. Yeah. But I mean, even in my seminar with Samoa Joe, he he'll tell you, I'll tell you. Not that we're on the same level, <laughs> but uh, you know, in that seminar, that's one of the things that he said to everyone. He said, "You just have to be honest with yourself. If you only want to do this on the weekends and just have fun with your buddies, that's fine. Do that, but don't try to pretend that you know you're the next big thing." Be honest with yourself and put in the work. That's that's it. Oh, yeah. Anything worth doing is worth putting that work in for it. For I mean, sure. Hell, hell, I'm quitting my job, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope it works out. <laughs> hey, you're doing pretty good for yourself. I've, I've enjoyed what I've been able to see. All right. Before we go, where can people find you social media-wise so they don't already have their eyes on you? They can go ahead and get them there. You can find me on X or Twitter or whatever the hell it's going to be rebranded to in the following year at Carmen M. Childers. It's C-A-R-M-E-N, the letter M, C-H-I-L-D-E-R-S. And, of course, you can see me uh, on Fight TV, on Premier Streaming Network, on Impact Plus, on IWTV. I'm trying to take over the world here. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had footage actually featured on Pro Wrestling TV and Fight. Hey, so. me too. Hey, we share that in common. That we got something coming. All right. <laughs> so that is about all I have. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking the time to talk to me tonight. And also, best real quick, out there, real quick. Oh. Sorry, promoters, if you're listening to this, check the pinned post on my Twitter. It is almost always my resume or a highlight reel. Check it out. I am happy to bring a car load from the state of Alabama, from Tennessee, wherever. I am just looking to get out and travel in 2024. Right. I'm going all in on wrestling. So There we go. Hit me up. Yes, we will have all of that in the description. Again, thank you so much. And I wish you well on getting not only – past 100 but next year getting all the way 150 let's go that's the goal let's go baby all right